All right, hello there, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host for this review episode for this 2020 BMW Mini Cooper SE, the all-electric three-door coupe version. Thanks very much for joining me. I've been, uh, and thanks very much again to BMW for allowing me the BMW Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle for a few days, and I've been able to uh, boot around the hills of Caledon here and drive back and forth a little bit on some errands. Uh, let me give you the lowdown on this vehicle. It's been a pretty fun few days, so let me tell you a little bit about it. Now this is BMW, especially the Mini brand's first foray into the all-electric landscape. Uh, you would have seen me interview BMW about two years ago at the Canadian International Auto Show. If you go look for that rec that uh, video uh, when they were planning, and they seem to be right on mark with their plans of releasing and getting this vehicle out. And in Canada, it looks relatively uh, very similar to what the concept showed at that uh, International Auto Show here in Toronto a couple years ago. I do like the design styling. It's a Mini, so it's got the heritage, it's got the DNA, it's got all those facets that carry from the Mini that continue on. And it is a fun and cool and funky looking design car. It's got that youthful vibe and energy about it. And of course, energy is the key operative for this all electric battery version. Now make no mistake, this is a four-seater. It's a three-door vehicle, uh, two doors and a hatch, and it is for four, but you've got to be a little tiny to get in that back seat, I'll tell you that, or tiny, uh, smaller up in the front to make rooms. It will fit four, but it'll be tight. Uh, really, this is designed for the urban people that need a vehicle to drive around, maybe one, one person or, or a couple to get around, maybe they got a dog or a small kid or something like that, it'll work great. It is a really nice uh, vehicle. The design elements, of course, as I mentioned, are all BMW and all Mini. The workmanship, the fit and finish of the material is excellent. I like the throwback to the uh, British uh, emblem, to the British flag for the uh, tail lights there that they showed at the show at the concept you know, on the concept vehicle. So glad they carried that over. And this is available in multiple colors and designs, so you can customize this a few different ways to get the look that you're looking for. Now this version is the top of the line, so it does come with the uh, sunroof, moonroof. Uh, it's got an all leather interior. It's got all the bells and whistles that you'll get out of this. Um, and it is fairly well equipped. I'm gonna to get to what I mean by fairly in a couple of minutes on the review. But overall, it's been a very comfortable vehicle to drive, even with my larger frame uh, and not so skinny uh, body to try to get in here and sit. It's been very comfortable and uh, nice to drive. Of course, the heart of any EV is its powertrain and the electric uh, motors and batteries. This is no exception. Uh, this does have a powertrain rated for up to 177 kilometers of EPA rated range based on a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is thermally cooled and thermally monitored. Now that powertrain is made a single DC motor up front, which will give you up to 181 horsepower and 199 pound-feet of torque to get you quickly moving. It is a zippy car and it will get in and out of traffic quite easily. It does support level 1, 2 and 3 charging, level 2 up to 7.4 kilowatts and level 3 up to 50 kilowatts through a CCS port. Now, as I mentioned in the driving, it does have spirit to driving. It, it, it kind of like a go-kart on wheels, uh, but more, much more refined, of course. It's very nimble, very exciting to drive around, um, and it has a very small turning circle of 10.7 meters or 35 feet. So again, easy to make those U-turns to get into uh, tighter driveway situations. Again, a perfect car for Europe and urban centers where sometimes uh, narrow streets uh, are more the norm. It's got decent cargo volume, certainly not huge for a car in this class. It is a subcompact compact after all, but it does uh, support uh, 211 liters or 7.5 cubic feet of cargo volume uh, just with the hatch, uh, with the rear seats up and you fold them down. You can expand that out to 731 liters or 26 cubic feet to store more goodies. Now from a driving and a regenerative braking standpoint, this has uh, two modes. It has soft and hard mode. And what it does is it allows you to select the, the amount of force, the amount of regenerative braking to recoup, and of course the names are, are tell you what it does. I ran this on soft mode all the time because I figured that was kind of a more pleasant experience. Hard is, is, is quite hard, it does bring you down. It does support one pedal driving, it has a hold mode, so if you want to do all that, you can in this vehicle. Now the interior, as I mentioned, is well appointed. It's very nicely done, no squeaks and rattles, the fit and finish is nice. It's funky looking, it's got older style 
uh, switches to, to as a throwback to the homage years. Um, it's got you know some little quirks about it, which is typical for, for British vehicles. Uh, it's got two displays, a 5.5 binnacle and a 6.5 touchscreen in the center instrument. Took me a little bit of time to get used to the, the center touchscreen infotainment system, but not that long. Again, you know, just going down the menus and seeing what's what. It does have double, uh, two various types of input. You can touch the screen itself, or you can use the rotary knob down by the shifter with buttons there to make your selections. Now, from a safety feature and appointments, um, it does have most of the check boxes uh, checked for things like rear view camera, um, sound, acoustic sound for pedestrian warning, uh, stability control, traction control, and so forth. But one thing it does lack are a couple of key things that I think, especially in a vehicle of this price class and this type of, uh, of manufacturer, we'll say in being BMW, it should have. It does not have adaptive cruise control. It does not have lane keeping or lane keeping assist type functions or even lane keep warning, uh, lane warning departure as they call it, that I could find. Um, and it does not have blind spot monitoring, which I was very surprised with because that's becoming much more standard now through even uh, a lot of different vehicles that are in much lower price classes than this one is. So let me just switch uh, to the interior, take you for a quick drive and give you my driving impressions. So quick driving impressions of the uh, BMW Mini Cooper SE All Electric. Uh, it's a fun car to drive. It really is spirited, has more than enough power for the size of the vehicle. Um, and uh, the weight and everything, even with the batteries, more than enough to get around. It's like driving a go-kart. It's a lots of fun. Uh, throw it through curves, throw it through bends. Easy to park, easy to maneuver. Um, pleasant uh, driving experience. I found good seating. Now again, seating small. You get a couple guys like me in here, it's going to get pretty warm pretty fast, I'll tell you that. But, you know, for the right folks, uh, this will this will do. Um, the noise isn't too bad. You should be able to hear me over the road noise. I'm going through a road uh, that's not the quietest as far as asphalt goes. Um, but it's nimble. Steering is very quick and precise. The brakes work really well. Um, everything works well uh, from a compact package and uh, not to uh, something that I would not be surprised in from the BMW brand and from the Mini vehicle. It definitely is a throwback homage to the, to the Minis and it's nice to see this in electrified form. Um, so again, uh, very pleasant driving experience, something that I could see myself driving for uh, longer road trips uh, as far as, you know, as much as the range is going to take you uh, and the charging going again. It is comfortable from that aspect. I would like to see more range. But uh, otherwise, that's it. As far as driving modes, it's got four driving modes. Mid, uh, sorry, Sport, Mid, uh, Green, and Green Plus. I usually keep it in the Green Plus, which is like an eco mode. Um, and one of the, the other things that I've noticed with this vehicle is every time I start it up, some of the settings that I set prior uh, are not retained. So, for instance, I set it into uh, lower regen. There's two regen, low and high. Um, I set it to, of course, the driving mode, and those aren't retained. They, I have to reset them all the time. Uh, so it's kind of frustrating. I did set, set up some driver profiles. It's okay. Um, you know, typical BMW menuing system. It takes a little bit of a while to get used to it, but it's not that bad. It's actually pretty good. Great sound uh, with the Harman Kardon sound system. Uh, very nice uh, sound. So anyway, pleasant driving experience and certainly something that people will enjoy and have fun with. All right, well, I was going to show you the um, uh, Mini E's adaptive uh, lane keeping, but it doesn't have it. At least if it does, I can't find it and uh, the cruise control doesn't seem to be active either as far as adaptive, sorry. Um, I, it's just a manual cruise control, which works fine, but obviously there's no adaptability to slow down for the traffic in front of you or keep a space. So that seems to be manual. Uh, if there is any lane keeping, I'll keep looking, um, but I, don't, I didn't find anything anywhere on, on the instrumentation to activate it nor in the menu system to turn it on. And uh, the cruise control just seems to be your normal cruise control that we've all loved uh, over the last few years. Um, other than that, I mean, you can see the heads up display uh, if it comes through on the video. It might be flickering because that's what happens with LEDs. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's a comfortable ride. It's relatively quiet. I've, I've actually got the, uh, the sunroof not open, but the, uh, the blinds for the sunroof open. So that will add a little bit more sound, but um, going you know on the highway speed here it's a pleasant ride so you can see the dash is fairly laid out it takes a little bit of time to uh, get used to the buttons here and the menuing system as I went through it um, I do like the the, the colors it's funky I guess is the word uh, the green is showing that I'm driving in a fairly economical uh, way or uh, under their e-power as you can see here um, and even on the HUD if you can see that it's got a green 
with uh, the speed indicator. So I'm not driving crazy and uh, it's fairly efficient registering. Let's see if I can get the uh, instant uh, efficiency here of 16.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilowatts right per 100 kilometers excuse me right now so not the greatest efficiency certainly we'd like to see somewhere around the 14s 13s 12s high 12s to be super efficient um, certainly the model 3s can get into the 14 range um, but uh, that's one thing that i understood about this vehicle is efficiency isn't the greatest um, but I'll see. I'll uh, monitor, track my kilometers, and uh, see how it goes. But it is. Let's get into pricing on the BMW Mini Cooper SE. It's not cheap, but it's not overly expensive either, depending on how you look at it. It does come with a three uh, trim levels, a Classic, a Premier, and Premier Plus here in Canada. That start at $39,990 Canadian and uh, peak up at $47,990. The all three models qualify for the Canadian Federal Incentive, which is $5,000. So when you look at the Classic Edition, which is fairly well equipped, including your PDI and your fees and your taxes, you can get this vehicle out the door uh, for somewhere around the $43,000 to $44,000 mark, which isn't too bad in the world of EVs as we know it. Now my tester was of course the Premier Plus Edition with all the bells and whistles, and that would be closer to $50,000 out the door. So I've had a few pleasant days with this vehicle, but there's always some pros and cons, and let me run through some of those. Uh, from the pros, the build quality and the comfort is very, very nice. Um, it's certainly not like uh, you know the big SUV that I drove before from a comfort, it's not supposed to be. Uh, the suspension is sporty, it has a decent feel. You do feel the bumps in that shorter wheelbase base again, you know, a little more boxier, uh, but it does manage it very well, holds the road quite well, and it lets you zip in and out like a go-kart, as I mentioned earlier, and a very solid BMW build quality. It is zippy and dry in the driving behavior, great for urban areas, even changing lanes on highways, no problems. Sound is a very quiet, not much sound noise when you're going at 100 kilometers an hour, 110 kilometers an hour or so. Uh, it's a very comfortable experience. It's got a good list of standard equipment in the vehicle, as it should in this price point, and being that it's a BMW. Uh, however, as I mentioned, I would like to see more, and that's coming up in the cons. It has this funky energetic styling, as I mentioned, which kind of really brings a fun atmosphere to the vehicle. Um, you know, not as much as maybe the VW uh, Volkswagen Beetle of or more po polarizing styles and some other vehicles out there. But because of the color palettes that you can mix up, you can kind of customize this to be your own. And it does uh, exclude, exclude, is that the word I'm thinking for? You know what I'm trying to say, folks. It's early morning and it's cool in here and bright and sunny. It, it does really show excitement and it, it feels it when you drive it. It's a very fun car to drive. And the pricing that I mentioned, you know, it's really at a good price point when you factor in the Canadian federal incentive and in other areas like the U.S. and other countries that have programs, state, uh, national and other local incentives, you can get this car at a pretty good price point in comparison to others. Now, some of the cons, I mean, again, I mentioned some of the lack of those standard safety features, which I think should be standard, but they're not there. And I think that that's pretty important nowadays. This has good visibility. But blind spot warning, I think, is a key now for many people because many people are getting lazy and checking over the shoulders. I'm still old school. I do it all the time. But, you know, technology, we need it to help. And I think some of those other features should be there as well. Now, the passenger space could be a con. I mean, again, I think people buying this vehicle know the space limitations from a passenger perspective and cargo capacity uh, perspective as well. So it's certainly not something you can hide. It is a small car, but it is a mini, and that's you know that's the way that that car is built and marketed. It was much smaller, the original one. Uh, so that can be a con, depending on what you're looking for in the marketplace. Now the battery range. I talked about it in my driving impressions, and it's been pretty good. Um, you know, I have been seeing about 165 kilometers on a full charge, 150 to 165 in the couple of uh, charges that I've done and some driving that I've done around the area, which is. Okay, so what that means is that it's fairly accurate in its predictions from a range, which is nice to see. However, I still think that this battery is too small nowadays, depending on, especially when you factor it into the 200 mile club and beyond, that's kind of the, the, 
de facto standard nowadays. And for the price point that this comes in at to have a 32 usable kilowatt hour battery pack is, is a little low in my opinion. It should be 40 or more in that aspect. Um, where, you know, two, as I mentioned, 200 miles, uh, two, 300 plus kilometers is kind of the new norm. Now, of course, not to say this won't work, it certainly will work. It will work for many that this will fit within their daily use driving patterns. It's a fun car to drive, great for zipping around urban areas, great for the European market, of course, with narrow streets and all that kind of stuff. But here at even Canada, with a little bit more of our vast expanses, this is a comfortable car to get you around, a very solidly built, fabulous Harman Kardon audio system, so you'll, you'll enjoy the experience when you're in the vehicle. But the range, again, you're going to be finding yourself stopping, and it only supports up to 50 kilowatts, which we know it won't pull full. It'll probably pull around 45, 47 uh, when, it's, uh, you know, when, when it's at a low state of charge. So it'll take you 45 minutes to get up to 80% or so, 30 to 45 minutes, and that could add to longer road trips. But certainly for within the medium range that this is designed for, it's a great vehicle. All right, so what's my verdict on this vehicle? Well, you know, I love all electric vehicles. You guys know that, so it's always a thumbs up from that perspective. Definitely give it a thumbs up if you're in the market for a Mini Cooper a vehicle. They, it's a fun uh, vehicle, has a lot of funky elements to it. You certainly won't be disappointed, as long as you understand the range limitations and what it brings you. It is pricey for the range that you get, but you're getting that build quality, you're getting the marquee of the BMW and the Mini name, and the heritage that goes with it. And of course, it does have a somewhat accessible price point. So when I factor in the basic version with the Canadian tax credits, the get it in under $44,000 Canadian out, you know, on the road, uh, out the door, that's a pretty decent price for a car that you get of this build, finish, and quality. Now, there are competitors out there in the Nissan Leaf, in the Chevy Bolt, um, in the Hyundai Ioniq even, the newer one, which has much more range than this, at a, a very similar price point. Uh, it, you might even be able to find it a bit lower. So there are good alternatives, but none of them have the BMW and the Mini marquee and heritage that this does, and the fun factor, in my opinion. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show uh, review of the 2020 BMW Mini Cooper SE all-electric three-door. It's always a lot to say, folks, when you talk about electric cars. Thank you very much for watching, subscribing, checking me out on YouTube. Please send me your comments. If you're an owner of one of these, I'd love to hear from you. Of course, subscribe if you have it. You can also click that bell and get instant notifications when I push a show up. Thank you very much. Of course, humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Uh, I'm always very humbled when I see the Patreon, and I talk to a lot of you quite frequently, and I appreciate the communications and the feedback. As always, please continue to stay safe. Uh, we're getting into the early parts of winter, or fall anyway, and then winter follows. So this is the seasons now that we're gonna start getting hammered, so please, you know what to do. Stay safe. Continue to follow the EV revolution. Lots of stuff going on. And uh, again, thanks everybody for supporting me. And until the next time, everybody stay safe, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.